Okay, everybody, welcome back to another edition of the My Colony Alpha Draconian tutorial. The, these are the reptilian people, and this is played on the recently released 0 0.99.0 update, which actually added a lot of new content for the reptilians. Now, as I talked about before, one of the problems reptilians always have is uh, with money at the beginning. It's hard to get money. Uh, actually, right before I started recording, I had to reject a uh, demand to pay taxes because I didn't even have enough money for taxes. But luckily, this new update adds a building that will remedy that which is a new Dracarys Mint, which I'm going to build now, right here. And this building just creates money out of uh, gold and ore. So that's very good. Once I get that built, we're going to uh, start hopefully solving our money problem here. This update also uh, solves some of the problems that the Brewmaster's den. Um, We've lowered the cost of the Brewmaster's Den a little bit so you can actually build it. Because rum is an important thing for reptilians. Because you need rum to build synthetic crystalline. And we uh, built a little bit last time and I let the game idle a little bit. And as you can see it is spread. I only built one synthetic crystalline and now I have like nine here. So that's good. I think I have enough to where I can just take one of these guys and tell him to start harvesting. If I tell them both to harvest, I might use it all up. But if I only have one guy harvesting, it'll let the other crystalline still spread while I'm harvesting. And also, something else happened while I was away. The Galactic Empire saw fit to send me 2,836 robots. Robots are one of the uh, more valuable resources in the game. And I really don't need them anytime soon. So I think I can go ahead and sell those. Oh, I can't sell them. <clears throat> so a good thing about being the developer of the game is uh, on the next step update, you probably will be able to sell these robots. So stay tuned for that. But I do have all these robots now. And look, um, I can pay these wages. They're $52. That's fine. And I got my mint here, which is going to create 50 money per minute, which is pretty good. All right, but anyway, I want to make the Brewmaster's Den. Oh, I can't afford it. First of all, I don't have enough power. And second of all, I don't have enough ore. So we need both of those things. One thing I do have quite a bit of is gold. All right, there's a new power plant in this update called the Basic Crystal Furnace. It does not provide as much power as the micro reactor, but it's theoretically cheaper to build if you have ore and crystalline. Right now, I have neither, and it's actually cheaper for me to build another regular micro reactor, which is what I'm going to do. Let's see, I'll put it right here. Get those river pebbles going. I'm actually going to go into the settings um, and turn the sound effect volume down just a little more. To those of you who play and don't know, in the menu here, there's an engine settings, and you can do a lot of things, especially if you're having performance problems, some of the things you can do, turn off uh, lighting effects, that helps quite a bit. This check render distance, if you turn that off, that'll help your performance. Um, there's an FPS cap, which can help, especially if you're on a phone that uh, heats up while you're playing, turning up the cap can help a little bit. Um, the low res mode can help. It uh, makes your graphics take up less memory. So if you go through here, just if you're having performance problems, try a lot of these things in this engine settings, and uh, it might help you out quite a bit. Okay, so I got more power now. I got this cranking out money for me, so I can hopefully pay taxes when the next bill comes due. And the next thing I'm wanting is this Brewmaster's Den, but we need more ore. We need more ore. Ore is always a problem. There is a building that uh, converts gold and ore, but I must not have it unlocked yet. <clears throat> and off the top of my head, I don't remember what the building's called, so it's okay. Maybe I'll build another uh, insectoid mining operation while I'm at it. There's eventually an upgrade to this that makes it a whole lot better, but until then... 
We're just going to have to deal with the regular mining operations. How much more ore do I need? 400. It might be worth it just to buy. Even though I only have 800 bucks. How much can I get for that? <laughs> for $400, I get 100 ore. So, um, yeah, I don't know that that's such a great price. I'm probably better off building more mining operations. You're always better, obviously, if you can produce the stuff yourself instead of buying it. So to make a mine here, can I afford another one right next to it? Yes. If you look on the bottom here, it actually calculates up your costs while you go. I might even be able to get one more. So that's not bad. Three more mining operations. I'll take it. I like to put a road around everything to make it look neat. I don't need an obsidian generator yet. <clears throat> Here I have these diamond deposits, and there is actually a new bot in this update for harvesting diamonds, the diamond extractor. Um, I can't afford it yet, but my mint here is actually cranking out money pretty good. I wonder if I can afford another one yet. No, ore, of course. Ore is always uh, what's dooming us. If you press S, or actually if you're on mobile, you click on this and go to statistics. You can look at your resources and see how much you're building. Um, these stats are roughly per minute. So with my mining operations, I'm making about 54 ore per minute. But my other buildings are consuming 34. Well, minus 7 because construction is not constant. And you can see a little trend of how your uh, ore is either going up or down. As you can see, we build up, build up, build up. And then we build something. Boom. And um, since we built that mint, we're actually getting about 160 money per minute, which is pretty good. Because I think the building was rated at oh, 153, so that's about right. So we're doing good there on money, which is okay because uh, the more money we get, the more likely we'll actually be able to buy the ore in the meantime if we need it. Because I really want that brewmaster in. We need rum. We need rum. Maybe I'll just import a little bit. Okay, I'm broke now, but that got me quite a bit closer. I still need 300 more ore to make it happen. And what's holding me back now on uh, building more mining operations is the ant paste. But I'm doing a little better on ant paste. As you can see, I built quite a few of these paste extractors. If we look at our resources, um, we're making about 115 ant paste per minute. So that's not bad. With my one guy harvesting crystalline, I'm making 64 per minute. And that's pretty good because, uh, as you can see, it's spread even further. So just one guy harvesting, um, I think we're going to be sustainable in the short term on that. You don't need a lot of crystalline at the beginning. Well, I say that. And now I look and everything requires it. So never mind. What the trash transporter here does is that, uh, as you can see, when you have people in your colony, trash starts building up. I have 261 right now. And the idea in the game is that eventually having a lot of trash is going to cause health problems with your people and lower your approval rating. But it actually doesn't hurt you at all right now. So it's good to think about for the long term because it, Someday is going to hurt to have a lot of trash in your colony, but right now it doesn't. So just a fun fact, if you're playing and you're trying to think about how you're going to manage your resources, you don't have to worry about trash right now. It is nice to get rid of it if you can, but it's nothing. It's not going to be an emergency. And I just want to build this brewmaster den, but I already have 500 gold again. Every time you buy something on the Stargate, the uh, the price fluctuates a little bit. But we're getting closer. I wonder if my uh, ore generation per minute has improved any. We're at 78, so that's okay. <clears throat> Okay. 
it might actually be worth it to build the obsidian generator soonish because it when you get obsidian, it does unlock quite a few new structures. And it might even unlock the one I need to upgrade this, which is called the raw materials extractor, I think. Which brings in ore and gold a lot faster, but it also brings in other things that are useful, like, uh, I think, clay and uranium. And probably aluminum, too. So that's going to be good once we can build that. But look at the ore, we're still a long ways off. And I wish I remembered what that building was that created ore. And it's probably something that requires obsidian. So we're just going to hang hang tight, sit pretty on that. We're doing okay on power. Bandwidth, we haven't used any of our bandwidth yet. We have that one high frequency node. So that's fine for now. 100 more needed. We're building our money back up. In just another minute, we should be able to have that Brewmaster's Den. If you guys have never taken a look at the statistics screen, you go to settings, statistics, and it shows you everything. If you click on this, you can actually rename your city. I'll keep it as Awesome Reptiles. You can change what color your city has. Uh, compression, I usually recommend having that turned on. Cloud Sync, I always turn it on. You have to be signed into an Ape Apps account to use it, but... Um, I've never had any problems with it. Um, this colony is in offline mode. If you go into online mode, you can trade with other players, which is very helpful. But the switch from offline to online takes away all your resources. You can create a custom flag for your colony. I haven't customized mine. Customized mine. It gives you a generic one at the beginning. Let's look at population. I've had 12 people for a while. They're all reptilians. Average age is 24. That'll slowly go up unless you get new people and it pops back down again. <laughs> There's nine illegal immigrants. What this means, your immigration automatically closes when um, all your housing is filled up. But the stargates work a little differently to where uh, it brings in more than one person. Like... You see this white bar here? Whenever it fills up, that means a new colonist is coming. But in Stargates, it brings in more than one. And so a lot of times you'll get more people than um, you have housing for. And they're considered illegal immigrants. And it's worse if you're on an online game. Because when you play online, if your approval rating is really low, people actually leave your colony through the Stargate. But what happens is they show up at other colonies that have a higher approval rating. So... You get like refugees from other colonies coming in when you play online. So that's why a lot of times I disable these stargates when I'm not using them. Because a lot of times you can't handle all these extra people. Like, what am I going to do with all these illegal immigrants? They don't have housing. Which if you go here to government, you look at a... Uh, well, nobody's complaining about their homelessness. But normally, if you have a lot of guys without houses, uh, you get complaints about homelessness. And um, they also generally do not work if they're unemployed, if they're unhoused. So it's something to worry about. I don't know why my GDP has fallen so much. But here you can see good things. Like, okay, I'm on the... First, let's go back to the government tab. This is how many taxes you've paid to your motherland country. If you go to economy, you can see how fast your economy is growing. Uh, the unemployment rate. Look at the size of the workforce, how many students you might have how many of your jobs are filled. This is important. Um, later on in the game, you can set policies like how much you pay everybody. And if they make more money than this here, retirement savings cut off, they retire and they stop working. So you're actually going to need more people than the amount of jobs you have to pay for all those retired people. But as you can see, uh, our guys hardly have any money, so we don't have to worry about that right now. I showed you the resources tab. You can uh, just check how how much resources you're making. Then there's the encyclopedia, the owner's manual. Um, you can see how many sieves, resources, planet types, text, buildings, vehicles, and trains are in the game. So this is all worth checking out. You might be watching the video because you found it here in video tutorials. If not, there are links to other video tutorials in here where you can submit your own to be included into the game. So if you have a YouTube channel and you want to make a My Colony tutorial and have it included in the game, come over here and do that. All right. We now have enough money for the Brewmaster's Den. 
which I'm going to place right there. We're going to start making our own brew. Which I already have a little bit, so this isn't going to unlock anything. The next thing we really need, I think, is this obsidian generator. Because that's going to unlock the new obsidian resources, which is going to give us a lot of new buildings. But, as you can see, I'm pretty far off on the ore. So, I'm going to end this part of the tutorial here. We uh, covered a few things. Some of the new buildings that are handy and um, we went through all the items on the statistics and the engine settings so i think we learned a little bit next time what i'm going to do is let it idle for a little bit until i have enough ore to build a subsidian generator which is going to unlock a whole new class of buildings and we're going to continue moving forward with this my colony alpha draconian reptilian tutorial so thank you for watching this part and uh, check out the other ones if you haven't yet and stay tuned for the next one which will be coming soonish. Bye for now.